Four years after the tragic Fukushima disaster, Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority has given its approval for the first restart of a reactor since the tsunami, marking the beginning of the return of Japan's nuclear energy industry. The NRA, also known as the Japanese Nuclear Regulation Authority, has approved the redesign of Kyushu's electric power's Sendai 1 reactor on the southern island in Japan. Um, Jose, uh, this might sound you know, a little scary for some people yeah. that they're starting up again, but it's inevitable. We can't expect the country to keep their reactors closed, which they have been since the tsunami, for obvious reasons. Um, but it also, you know, it is a worrisome concern. Not because of this Ascende 1 reactor in Kyushu that, that they're opening up very soon, yeah. but for the number two reactor of the Tsurugara plant. That plant, unfortunately, is next. And they're, they're vying for, for their testing. Their approval will come Processing probably will after the Kyushu one. But the mm -hmm. problem is, like a lot of other plants, it sits directly on a fault line, right on top of a fault line which we know is susceptible to earthquakes, but even if there isn't an earthquake, they still shift, even when there's no earthquake. <laughs> and if it's, a, it's a plate. It, it's a plate, what and if do. that moves, then obvious terrible things can happen. Um, it raises a lot of questions. This reminds me now, if, if I'm gonna start to get into, you know, what's gonna happen next, can we just see the same thing happening over again? Do we see nuclear energy as a way out? I mean, I, I, on its way out, I mean, because we see countries like Costa Rica that yeah. for all of 2015 has literally been working on almost all renewable energy, no coal, no nuclear, Consistently, no Costa Rica has around 80% of the energy come from renewable resources out of water and their hydroelectric plants. Uh, obviously, they are trying to be the very first country in 2021 to become completely coal-free. So all of their energy will be coming from renewable sources. So it's an example that there is a way for us not to rely in oil, coal, coal or nuclear energy. That being said, let's go back to Japan for a moment, if mm -hmm. you will. 2011 is not that far away. Right. We have a tragedy that granted could not be prevented. It was a natural disaster, 15 meter tsunami, 18,000 people died and triggered one of the biggest modern nuclear tragedies that we, our generation and, and two or three more have seen. Yeah. Uh, maybe two only. But we, are we risking this from happening again? Are, why, are, why, are we, why are we doing that? Why because I will tell you why. Because Japan has a lot of people. Yeah. On the highest, one of the highest populated countries. It's not Costa Rica, okay? Yeah. A lot of people. They have no choice, right, at this point. Every country has nuclear reactors. The problem is, with Japan, A, given its location, that, you know, the ring of fire mm -hmm. on the Pacific where we have all these volcanoes and a really big tectonic plate, it's... Where, where Japan is located, basically, is one of the, the highest seismic activity areas in the world. That's one part of it. The other part of it, the middle, if you can see on the map, the middle of Japan, all mountains. Most people can't live there, you can't have nuclear reactors there, so everybody, not everybody, the majority of the population lives on the coastal Coast. areas. They can't help it, it's a small island, they can't move around much, that's what they're working with, that's what they got, that's where our technology is at, at the moment. But yes, we do have to rely on the nuclear energy, and it's scary, because you know what? They spent 189.2 billion yen on shutting down the facility in yeah. Fukushima. That's 1.5 1. 1. Uh, billion. billion dollars. US. And they, they projected that you know, it it'll take 30 years for them to recover from that. Not, given you know, given the, the natural devastation and, and everything that happened, but economic too. economic too. So obviously that's not their first choice, but it's their only choice at this point, given where we are at with technology now. But we have countries like Costa Rica who are leading the way, who are showing that it is possible, at least for smaller countries. Well, my, my concern is that, yes, we'll have these smaller countries like Costa Rica and Switzerland that are at the forefront of living green and generating their own energy. But at the end of it, they will be affected by a major nuclear disaster, even if it happens in Japan. Right. And that's something that we need to take into account. As a, as a global community, what happens in Japan, if that happens again in a, in a similar scale or even bigger, then that's a th real threat for the rest of the planet. Oh, same and with all pollution. All pollution. Not so just nuclear. I think that 
more than ever, we need to push governments to lean towards renewable energies as much as they can and prove that they're doing the most before they can rely on these risky power sources. It is risky, but for now, all they can do, they need energy too, like everybody. Let us know what you guys think and how you feel about the uh, reactors reopening in Japan. We'd love to know. And of course, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the Lip TV for more.